Gordon Southwood stick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, what's going on? So I've actually um, I'm at MDT Motorsport now. Got an R35 GTR. Right. R32 GTR, 900 brake plus power. Actually, that's brake plus power. R33 GTS3, R34 GT2 actually, with four doors. And then this time 1000, 1000 brake plus power. And my Skyline's in the dyno. It's a uh, Garth at MGT Motorsport is setting up uh, the Skyline right now. Put the hubs onto the wheel, put all the uh, sensors onto the engine to get a proper accurate tuning of the car to see how much brake horsepower the Skyline is actually putting out. It's going to be a very exciting day for me, so uh, let's see what's going on. So the Skyline is all set up on the dyno right now. I'm actually so excited because uh, I had a lot of people doubted the Skyline saying that I'm just been running 500 brake horsepower, 400 brake horsepower but the previous owner claimed that this is running 700 brake horsepower so we will see if this car is running 700 brake horsepower and Ricky drove it himself a little fast and he claimed that this is driving 700 brake horsepower. It's no joke this car is but uh, yeah so we'll see what this car is pushing. How long does it take for the whole tuning process? Um, it varies but anything between a full day and two days. Really? Yeah. So it won't get done today? No, because I have to do cold start. Even if I did everything else today, <coughs> cold start has to be done. And it can only be done after the car has been calibrated, not before. And it has to be completely cold. Garth is just testing the power right now. The actual thing will begin in a bit. Wow. Wow. So the, the dyno hub can just shut off the power with just lifting the clutch off. It's crazy that is. So right now you can see Garth is testing the power. So that was just um, 2,000 RPM to 4,000 RPM, 86 brake horsepower. Just doing good little tests, but hey, very exciting this is. That's crazy that is. the manifold is red hot. <laughs> Sick. Look at that peak. <laughs> What was all that you were doing with the, you started off at 150 brake horsepower to 200 to 250? I'm just gradually increasing the load. As I said to you, I start from as low down as I can and work my way up. So that 
you don't start tuning at full load and work your way down because if something's wrong, bad things happen quickly. Wow. So you just gradually creep up on the load all the time. Why does it take two days to tune a car? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Some cars take less, some cars take more. It depends on the complexity of the tune. It depends on the strategy you use. Um, but more importantly, it depends on how you go about tuning yourself as an individual. You know, sometimes you can tune cars a lot quicker um, and it does depend on the car and what your experience is with it. But I allow myself a minimum of a day to tune a car because yeah. there's always variables. Not to mention the fact there's quite often problems. Cars yeah. don't always come in the dyno cell, get bolted to the dyno and just get tuned without issues of misfires or lack of fuel or whatever. Yeah. So I allow myself enough time to be able to cope with any possibilities that might arise. Excellent. He's a wizard. We're getting there guys, we're getting there. In the 600s right now in the flight. Oh, not too far after 700. So, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm gonna have to ask Garth and Mark to explain these figures, cause I'm not, I don't know how these graphs work, but I do know that he has said that it's running very impressive and it is over the 600 brake horsepower right now. But 630, 640. What do you think then, Garth? What do you think? What tell me about the figures. There's not a lot to tell you. You've seen what it uh, is it's made. At the max, it said it was 585. Yeah, I mean, wheel. it's probably around that now, but obviously, when you do quite a few pulls back to back, everything gets warm. Yeah. So you might lose a few horsepower here and there, but it's an accurate average. And that's at uh, what? Uh, which bar is that pushing at? That was 1.5 bar. 1.5. That's that's safe as well at that yeah. power. Obviously, on a different day, it yeah. could make slightly different horsepower for one, and it depends on the type of dyno it's on and the kind of correction that they're running on their dyno as well. Mm. All of these things affect the figures. Okay. What would you say uh, in terms of torque? I mean, they're good solid numbers. Uh, you know, the best judge of. Uh, the car is going to be you when you drive it. 
because you know the car, so you know you'll be able to report to me whether. <laughs> so is that? Do you do any anything more on the road with this, or do you just drive the car? Do you do any map on the road? Measure anything on the road? Um, it, it's not a case of so much measure um, or, or map rather, but yes, we we're going to road test it to check it to make sure that it drives the way that it should do on the road because the dyno is one thing. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't correlate to the car's behaviour. So we have to go and road test it to make sure that it's um, that it's satisfactory. Wow. Would you, would you say there's any more recommendations to this or that's the optimum of this uh, car? Um, well I'm not even sure what turbocharger that is because it's not been mentioned. It's um, ID1000 injectors and the turbo is a um, Garrett GT3582 ball bearing turbo with Owen development bearing carry upgrade and filter. Alright, okay. It's a decent sized turbo. Well, I did notice that your injector duty cycle was quite high, so given that the injectors are thousands, um, we could be getting close to uh, the fuel pump flow limit as well. The fuel pump at its max, basically. Well, yeah, I mean, if they're 1,000 cc injectors, they're unlikely to be the problem. The problem is more likely to be fuel delivery from the pump. But yeah, we're getting close. Well, this one is yeah. the launch control. Launch control. I've wired it into this. Okay, alright. So, okay. if you look at this box now, can you yeah. see that 4000 is highlighted? Yeah. yeah. That means that launch control is set at 4000 RPM. Okay, alright. That is this directly upright position. Okay. Which is also the middle of this box. So is that at 4000 right now? 4000 right now. Now watch. If I turn that fully clockwise to its lowest setting, yeah. can you see that now, 3, We're at 3,000. If you watch now, okay. watch this. I'll turn it one movement. See one? Yeah. Two, three, four, five. Directly up again. Okay. So you've got everything from 3,000 RPM to yeah. 5,000 RPM launch RPM in increments of 200. Okay. So if you, I don't know, you're somewhere and you launch it at 4,000 and you get too much wheel spin and you want to lower the launch RPM, yeah. you just turn that anti clockwise and it reduces it down. Each increment is 200 RPM. Yeah, so two, yeah. so four, three, eight hundred. Yeah, three, six. Three, six, three, four, three, two, three, two, three, thousand. Three, thousand. And there you are. Ah, oh, right. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Right. So back to four. So that's the first one. Okay. Obviously going the other way takes you up to 5,000. The pops and bangs. Yeah. I've set that up so that works when this position yeah. is where it is now. Okay, 4,000. If it's in the middle or further, yeah. it will work. If it's before the middle or lower, it won't work. Got it. That way, that even when you're driving normally, because obviously pops and bangs will work yeah. when you're driving, yeah. launch control only works when you're stood still. Okay. You can control having pops and bangs on. So you might be driving around and you don't want to make a lot of noise. And yeah. if you were to put that there, it wouldn't make any. Wow. But if you put that there, it would make some. Okay. Thank you.